In this video, we're going to derive the last Maxwell relation that we will cover in this course, and that is the one that we can obtain from the Gibbs energy. All right, so let's plug in here what the derivation, uh, what the definition of the Gibbs energy is, which is just the enthalpy minus the product of the temperature and entropy. Take first derivatives, and we get the following, differential of S minus S differential of T, and now here we're going to uh, replace the differential of H uh, by the definition of enthalpy. Remember that enthalpy is just uh, internal energy plus the product of the pressure and volume. So what that means is that we're going to have the following. Plus differential of product volume product minus T differential of S minus S differential of T. All right, so we're going to unfold this uh, into two terms internal energy plus pressure differential of volume plus volume differential of pressure TDS minus SDT and one more thing that we can do here is uh, use the first law to uh, replace that by useful quantities right so again a reversible process in which only expansion work can be done so that is going to be differential of Q reversible plus differential of work reversible and then uh, the rest of the terms, which are getting to be quite long, but of course they're going to be canceling out fairly quickly as we move along. All right, so we're uh, used to seeing this already. That is uh, the thermodynamic definition of entropy. And this is minus the external pressure differential of V for a reversible isothermal expansion. There's mechanical equilibrium so we can uh, simplify that as simply the pressure differential of V plus P dV plus V dP minus temperature differential of entropy minus entropy differential of temperature and here we see a whole bunch of cancellations so uh, differential of entropies and we also have differential of volumes so that sets up uh, what the fundamental equation for the Gibbs energy is which is as follows. Gibbs energy has its natural variables, uh, the pressure, and also the temperature, as differential of T. Okay, great. Notice that uh, this makes perfect sense, right? Notice that uh, when we introduced the Gibbs energy, we did, as, uh, did that as a way to obtain a criterion for spontaneity that only depended on the system. The conditions were, though, that the uh, Gibbs energy, uh, that that calculation had to be carried out at constant pressure and constant, at constant temperature. Right? So for isothermal isobaric processes, the Gibbs energy is a really good, very convenient uh, way to determine the uh, spontaneity of, of a process or whether you have an equilibrium. Right? So, so it seems natural that the Gibbs energy ought to depend on those variables, the temperature and the pressure, and we see that indeed uh, it does. Right, with that fundamental equation. All right, very good. So we proceed as usual. Uh, the Gibbs energy depends on pressure and temperature. Take total derivatives with respect to uh, those variables. So partial of Gibbs energy with respect to pressure, constant temperature, and Gibbs energy with respect to temperature of constant pressure. All right, so. Uh, notice that we have the values of those first derivatives and we're ready to build here the Maxwell relation. Okay, so let's look at the second derivatives then. Uh, the second derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to uh, pressure and temperature will be this one. And again, because this thing is a state function, this, this uh, Gibbs energy is a state function, then the path should not matter to the change in that uh, function for a given process, right? So it really doesn't matter if first you're changing the temperature than the pressure or first the pressure than the temperature, uh, because it's path independent, these two second derivatives should be equal to each other. All right, so let's go step by step and see if we can uh, make this make sense. All right, so we will have here is the Gibbs energy with respect to temperature, constant pressure, and then of that we have to take the derivative with respect to pressure at constant temperature. All right, and here we have first the derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to pressure 
at constant temperature. And then we have the first derivative uh, with respect to temperature at constant pressure of the result of that. Great. All right, let's look for these first derivatives. Uh, with respect to temperature, we have it right here. So that is minus entropy. Uh, right, so partial derivative with respect to P of uh, the minus entropy at constant uh, temperature. And then in the bottom equation we have, uh, let's look for the first derivative that gives energy with respect to pressure, that is as the volume. So we have here that that is going to be the partial derivative of the volume with respect to temperature okay, at constant pressure. All right, very good. That is our Maxwell relation for from the Gibbs energy. Let's uh, write it down here so that we can uh, put it in the same column as the other three Maxwell relations that we have studied. Okay, so uh, partial derivative of volume with respect to temperature at constant pressure is going to be equal to minus the partial derivative of the entropy with respect to pressure at constant temperature. And we have derived this from the Gibbs energy. All right, so we can now ask the question of whether this makes any sense at all, whether we can connect it to something that is tangible, that we can put a number to. And the answer is that in this particular case, this is going to be quite simple to do, right? Notice that this partial derivative to the left is something that we have seen in, in prior videos and in our work with the first law. Right? Notice that this is just simply how the volume of a substance uh, changes with temperature at constant pressure. That is connected to the expansion coefficient. Remember that the definition of the expansion coefficient was is 1 over the volume of exactly that first derivative that we have right there. Constant pressure, so that means that um, this partial derivative is going to be equal to the alpha, which we can put right here. That is going to be the alpha. So again, this, this shows you the usefulness of Maxwell relations, right? What this allows you to do is to understand how the entropy of a pure substance changes with pressure isothermally. Okay, so, so you will have a sample of a substance and then you will be changing the pressure isothermally and it turns out that that variation is actually equal to the volume of the sample multiplied by uh, the expansion coefficient, which again is, is, an, is a relation that we, you would never have expected to think about on your own, but once you go through the Maxwell relations, you see that that ought to be true, and it is true, right? So hopefully this, this really highlights uh, how useful these uh, Maxwell relations can be. In the next few videos, we're going to look at a few more applications uh, uh, so that all this hard work that we have been doing deriving these Maxwell relations uh, uh, can be useful to you.